I'm Lorna McPherson. I'm a dairy consultant and ruminant nutritionist with SAC Consulting. Today, we're looking at multi-species swords. This is part of a farm advisory service funded project where we're going to be looking at the agronomics of multi-species swords, how best to establish them, what are the benefits, and also hear from two farmers about how they're using multi-species swords and how they fit into their system. We'll be looking at producing one video which is specific to beef and sheep farmers and another video that will be focused on dairy and there will also be accompanying fact sheets on these topics as well available. We're here today at Ed Robinson's farm at High Milton near Port William on the west coast of Scotland. Ed has recently established a multi-species sward to use predominantly in his sheep enterprise but depending on how successful it is, he may look to expand the use of these swords and utilize them in his beef enterprise as well. So what are the nutritional benefits of multi-species swords over perennial ryegrass swords? Well, generally they can have a slightly higher protein content. And this is true in swords that will have a high level of clover, both red and white clover, but also lucerne as well. The other benefit of multi-species swords is that some of the species tend to have a lower NDF or fibre content, meaning they're slightly more digestible with a higher metabolizable energy content. And this would refer to chicory and also the clovers, red and white clover. Other nutritional benefits is a higher level of minerals as well. Certain herbs and species will have higher levels of some of the trace elements that are really important for livestock health and production, such as copper, zinc and selenium. And this means that it can reduce the amount of supplementation required, but always take nutritional advice on levels of supplementation when feeding livestock on multi-species swords. When it comes to animal performance, we tend to see improvements in daily live weight gain in beef cattle, in dairy heifers and also in lambs. And some trials have shown that lambs have got to slaughter on average two weeks earlier when being grazed on multi-species swords. We tend to see more improvements in animal performance, whether that's in growing or lactating stock, the more diverse the sward is, so the more species that are included within the mix. Chicory, sandfoin and bird's foot treffle have all been shown to have anthelmintic properties. This means that they can potentially reduce the need for worming. In trials by University College Dublin, they managed to reduce worming in sheep by 50%. If grazing young stock on multi-species swords, you can use faecal egg counts to establish the need for drenching for worms. However, this will not be useful to detect any lungworm challenge. So if you are grazing susceptible young stock on multi-species swords, you must consider lungworm preventative treatments, even if you're looking at reducing the need for drenching for worms. When grazing young stock, and whether that's beef cattle or replacement dairy heifers, when they're on multi-species swords, we tend to see more even growth rates throughout the season, with maybe less of a surge in growth in May, but improvements in growth rates later on in the season. This gives a great opportunity to extend the grazing season. However, some species, particularly herbs, are very susceptible to damage from poaching, so it is important to manage grazing carefully in the shoulders of the season to prevent damage to the sward and improve the persistency of certain herbs. When grazing multi-species swards, it is important to leave a residual of eight centimetres to allow good regrowth of the plants, particularly red clover, so that the crown is not destroyed. However, the optimum grazing height is slightly higher than perennial ryegrass swards, and the optimum grazing height is around 3,200 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Multi-species swords tend to be used more in grazing situations, but they can also be cut for silage. When using multi-species swords for silage, it is important to include varieties that can withstand regular cutting, such as red clover, lucerne and plantain. Chicory is not so suited for a silage mixture. It has a tough stem which can pierce silage bale wrap and it also goes to head very quickly. As multi-species swords overall tend to have a slightly lower dry matter than perennial ryegrass swords, they may require a longer wilt to achieve the target dry matter for silage. They are also low in sugars, particularly the clovers, so a silage additive will be of benefit to improve the fermentation and preservation of nutrients. In a multi-species sward, persistency of some of the species 
can be problematic, especially if there is a good content of perennial ryegrass in the mix, which tends to be very competitive and outcompete other species. Grass species such as coxfoot and timothy tend to be less competitive and will allow other species such as your herbs and other legumes to thrive and persist longer in the mix over time. My name is Ed Robinson, a farm at High Milton Farm near Port William in Dumfries and Galloway. We have about 300 acres here and we run a 90 cow suckler herb system and a sheep system involving around about 300-320 pure clip ewes. With our sheep system we aim to finish all the lambs off farm, but with our cattle we sell them as stores, sometimes at 12 months with the balance sold at around about 16-17 months. I first heard of multi-species swords through Fast Connect and was interested in seeing how I could incorporate them with my own, within my own system. The benefits of using multi-species swords in the sheep system is that it will allow me to fatten lambs off the farm quicker than it would using a normal grass-based system, but it also presents with the opportunity of using less bought-in concentrates on farm. This particular species mix is heavy on chicory and plantain with ryegrass and red and white clover also in the mix. The chicory and the plantain are deep rooted and therefore able to access water further down in the soil than other grass-based species. I hope that as the climate gets drier that using these deep-rooted species will help offset the impacts of a drought on my farming system. Legumes such as clover are nitrogen fixing and I hope that over time uh, using clover within the mix will allow me to reduce the amount of artificial fertilisers that I have to apply onto the ground. This is my first time trialling a multi-species sward on the farm. Last year I planted forage rape on this field and after the winter, I decided that a multi-species sward might be something which would be worth pursuing on this field. The field lay fallow over the winter. It was then sprayed off in the middle of May before we disked it and then lifted stones and gave it a roll. We carried out a second spray off in July to knock any emergent weeds on the head before we planted the seed towards the end of July. The pH in this field was slightly lower last year than we would have liked, so we applied hen manure and lime in order to lift the pH towards six. Then we established the forage rape. The hen manure helped lift P and K levels in the soil, while also providing a wee bit of liming, which was then supplemented by lime on top. The main challenge in establishing a multi-species sward is getting on top of the weeds before you seed the field. Once the seed is in place, it's not possible to control weeds again without wiping out some of the species that you're hoping to encourage. The main driver for establishing a multi-species sword here was aiming to fatten lambs off farm quicker than we have done so in the past. But we're also interested in looking at whether or not using a multi-species sword can help offset the impacts of droughts, which are becoming more of a frequent occurrence in this part of Scotland. High Milton is quite a thin soiled farm and probably more susceptible to drought than other farms even in this part of the world. So I'm quite interested in whether or not multi-species sward can help offset the impacts of droughts on the farm in the future. Top tips for establishing a multi-species sward would be making sure that you get your seed bed well prepared and weeds under control and also ensuring that your pH is in the range of 6 to 6.3 before establishment. In this instance, we've used multi-species swords for fattening lambs, but we may well choose to look at using this, the, them within the cattle system on the farm in the future. So in the first instance, we've used multi-species swords here as a, as a means of fattening lambs, but we also fattened store cattle on a paddock grazing system which has in the past been quite susceptible to droughts and it's definitely something I'm thinking about utilising in future years as a means of ensuring that those paddock systems work throughout the summer even in dry weather.